To make and move in a virtual world is to create, instant by instant, reality itself. As we rediscover, bit by bit, the laws by which we construct, experience, and share reality, as we mirror and digitize its mechanisms and immerse ourselves in our creations, we give ourselves new messages about what is and can be real, messages that transform our ways of thinking, working, touching, loving, connecting with ourselves and each other. Together we can create and live in a universe as limitless as our dreams of ourselves. This is the digital revolution. This is also the reality of Burning Man. Every year at the end of summer, 30,000 people come together in the tabula rasa of the Nevada Black Rock Desert to create a city of atoms as immersively interactive as any virtual world and as internally consistent and otherworldly as the most compelling science fiction. At the end of a week of profane and sacred communal revel, the man is burned amidst wild celebration. And in recent years, on the following and final night, comes an experience even more extraordinary. Picture this. On the farthest reaches of the desert playa, way out beyond the man, stands the temple, a huge, magnificent structure made entirely of small pieces of jigsawed wood. It is Catholic cathedral, Jain temple, Buddhist shrine, east meets west, wood and dust made spirit. All week long, people in ones and twos have made a pilgrimage to the temple to write the names of their departed beloveds on the small pieces of wood that make up the temple's structure. In the midst of the carnival that is Burning Man, the temple is a place of memory and grief. By day, people weep quietly in the sunlight that filters through the temple's filigreed wood. In the moonlight, they hold each other and remember. Finally, it is Sunday, the day after the burn. A great wind has come up, whipping the chalky dust of the playa into blinding white sandstorms. All day long, the temple disappears in the whiteness, reappears, then disappears again, the image of all that is ephemeral and enduring. As dusk falls from all corners of the city, people make their way across the sands to the temple, drawn by a force stronger than gravity. We stand in a semicircle around the temple in silence, waiting. Darkness falls. The fire dancers light their torches and move forward to set the temple aflame. Suddenly the wind begins to blow and blow, and the temple disappears behind a blinding gray-white screen of sand, and the wind blows harder and harder, and the sand stings my face, fills my ears and nostrils, whips against my skin, and I am staring into whiteness. And I look around at my husband and my friends and at strangers, and we are coated completely with gray-white ash. We are a race of gray-haired elders with red-rimmed staring eyes. We are older than time in a space between worlds, and we are waiting for something. And just as suddenly, the wind stops blowing. The torchbearers light their torches and move forward, and in one swift motion, fire touches wood, and the temple explodes in flame. And a grief much bigger than I can understand seizes me and rips me open, and I begin to scream and scream. And I look up, and the moon is huge and full, and the spirits of our loved dead are rising up in that moonlit sky. And I think, what is it that we as a human race need to understand right now on this planet about shared, witnessed, public, communal grief? What do we need to understand so desperately that the wind, the moon, the whole planet has conspired to make this moment, to give us this image of a flaming temple of east meets west, this image that burns into our eyes and hearts and souls, this image of grief, yes, but of hope, of the possibility of community healing, and beauty, and oneness, 
and transcendence, what must we understand? That was September 4th, 2001. One week later came another image of a burning building, a tower in flames, an east meets west, a people covered in dust and ash, an image burned into us a hundred million times over until the whole planet was screaming, an image of death and grief, yes, an image fanned into an inferno of terror and panic and rage and revenge. Two burning buildings, Two images, one in the desert, one in the city, one that destroys, one that can heal. Reality is a choice. Let us choose our images wisely. Then let us bear witness to our choices. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Yeah.